Hi folks, Don Stimson here, Kansas Meteorite Museum and Nature Center. Uh, a lot of folks like to collect palisite meteorites but have trouble with stability, rusting. And so I put this video together to try to highlight at least one aspect of the, uh, the problem and that is uh, humidity. Some folks live in very humid areas and that can affect your meteorite. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation out on the internet so take everything with a uh, grain of salt including what I say. Verify it for yourself and not just what somebody else tells you and uh, make sure it works for you before you make any kind of uh, major commitments. Okay, we're going to uh, set up this experiment here, see the uh, uh, effects of humidity on uh, the stability of the meteorites. Uh, what we got here is just a jar, a little bit of uh, uh, distilled water in a cap. Put that in there. <coughs> Just a uh, platform, and then uh, we have a bit of uh, Edmire meteorite. Look at that, and a, uh, a bit of uh, of Brenham uh, meteorite. Okay, and uh, let's push this in a little further. And put this guy here. Okay, and uh, we'll seal this up and uh, come back in a few weeks and see how things look there. So uh, there's our, our meteorites in the jar, a little bit of water underneath there. Now in this jar, we're going to put some uh, molecular sieve in there, a desiccant. And just sprinkle a goodly amount in the bottom there. And there's our desiccant and uh, tray on top and then uh, we're going to put our Brenna meteorite in there and uh, an Admar meteorite so this will be stored under uh, uh, fairly dry conditions sit on there will you there we go okay and uh, let's see have a look at those And we'll put the uh, top on the jar. Okay, it's uh, it's been about a half hour. I thought I'd show you what's going on with the humidity in these chambers. Uh, here's our little meter again. So I guess we're sitting around 25 in the museum, 26. Uh, here's the uh, the desiccator, the uh, jar with the desiccant. And uh, you can see things just equilibrating right now, and uh, the uh, humidity is uh, is quite low with the uh, the 4A molecular sieve uh, desiccant in there. And see where it goes to. Okay, so we're less than uh, it's like less than nine percent uh, RH already. So, uh, and uh, in the other container then with the water, uh, that should get to 100% relative humidity, uh, kind of by definition. So let's pop the cork on that sucker. And we have a look here, let's see where we're at. Yeah, looks like we're up, what, 48, 49, 50 percent, and uh, that should get up to, uh, I think I got enough water to fully saturate the air inside the, uh, the bottle, so uh, that should get to uh, 100 percent uh, relative humidity once it's uh, equilibrated. Okay, it's been uh, been a couple of weeks, and we're going to have a look at our uh, specimens. These are uh, the ones in the desiccator. You can see the desiccant at the bottom there. Uh, do a quick check on the relative humidity. See where we're at. Let's take a little while to equilibrate. So 
So uh, with the uh, molecular sieve in there, we're storing uh, the uh, the meteorites at less than uh, uh, two percent uh, RH. Uh, or uh, here's a uh, dew point minus uh, uh, 29 degrees Celsius. Look what they look like after a few weeks in there. There's the admire it fell off uh, the pedestal. As you can see there's uh, no real change. The uh, Brenham, so we'll get that Brenham out of here. Again, uh, no real change. There's nothing uh, obvious by eye. Okay, and in the other uh, uh, jar, we uh, had uh, had water in there. So we should be at uh, pretty close to 100% RH. Do a quick check on uh, what our humidity is in here. And it's been sitting in that for a, for a couple of weeks now. So simulating, you know, an environment like, I don't know, Louisiana, Houston, uh, beach house, possibly. Um, you know, someplace uh, where you have, uh, have pretty high humidity. Well, I should mention too, I did keep these uh, specimens uncoated uh, just to uh, speed up the effect. If you put coating on there, it'll, it'll slow it all down, but uh, no coatings are, are perfect and they, uh, they allow uh, uh, oxygen and water to, uh, to permeate. Okay, so there we are at about, uh, about 90% uh, RH. Uh, uh, given the uh, uh, current temperature in here. Let's see. Dew point about 18 degrees uh, C. Here's the, uh, the Brenham meteorite. And uh, you can see, uh, hopefully, uh, there's some uh, little rust spots uh, starting to form. There's actually a little bit of liquid that's uh, uh, been uh, uh, absorbed into the crystal uh, at that that uh, crystal metal interface. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that blebbing out from the surface there, and uh, that's not good. Eventually, that's going to cause uh, some real uh, real problems in this specimen. Uh, let's have a look at the admire. Oops, there we go. That was easy. Um, and you can see uh, similar problems, maybe a little bit uh, worse, but uh, uh, rusty liquid uh, coming out of the interface between the metal and the uh, olivine silicate stone. I'll just kind of wipe some of that off. It uh, you know it just looks like a, a rusty liquid. Okay, well, hopefully that kind of illustrates the uh, uh, the, the negative uh, aspects of high humidity storage. Uh, I didn't mean to imply that uh, uh, Brenham was somehow better than Admire in terms of stability. This one uh, had a garage fire a few years ago, and it's been laying out in that garage uh, since then, uh, just in the uh, environment. So you know Brenham, if you let it go bad it'll go bad on you. Um, on the other hand this one here I cut this I think it was back in 2008 and it's been sitting in the museum uh, we keep the humidity you know below 35 percent we try for and you can see uh, very little uh, problems here it has never been refinished a uh, little bit of rust up here and uh, heck we can pretty much just uh, rub most of that off of there so uh, uh, you know, you can keep these things uh, from rusting with, uh, with a little bit of uh, effort. Okay, I should uh, mention that uh, some palisites have uh, less problem with, uh, with high humidity environment, and that seems to have something to do with uh, salts. You look at uh, this Brenham here, uh, this white stuff, that's not meteorite, that's uh, earth salts that have glommed onto the meteorite over tens of thousands of years and uh, 
salts also tend to uh, absorb water from uh, from uh, the air, and so uh, uh, if the uh, salt has seeped into the uh, interior of the meteorite, uh, that can uh, uh, also cause uh, problems with uh, with high humidity environments. For uh, for a desiccator, just about any uh, relatively airtight jar will do. Uh, I like these things. You can get them at Walmart. They're pretty inexpensive. Got a silicone gasket up here, and uh, they seal pretty tightly. And it makes it easy to, to change out the, uh, the uh, desiccant when it is uh, spent. Okay, last but not least, what do you use for the desiccant? Uh, suck the water out of, your, uh, out of your desiccator and away from your meteorite. Uh, I like this stuff, Molecular Sev 4A. Uh, it can easy to regenerate uh, with a little uh, uh, bench top oven and uh, can use it uh, over and over again. Uh, unless you're using it to like dry oil and then uh, that's pretty much a one use. Uh, I'm not a big fan of uh, silica gel. <clears throat> it doesn't have great characteristics at the uh, real low end of uh, humidities, but uh, if it's freshly generated, it's not bad. Um, and you can even use uh, this, Epsom salts. Uh, you can see it's magnesium sulfate with seven waters on it. Now, you have to heat that, and uh, you can find the procedure on the internet and remove uh, most of those waters and then uh, it wants to grab those waters back. So it's a, it's a pretty darn good desiccant too. And uh, it's, uh, it's really endless. It's a whole other uh, uh, video to discuss this. <clears throat> you could uh, put nitrogen in, the, in your desiccator. You can put argon, replace the atmosphere, get rid of the oxygen. Or in this case, I just pulled a, a hard vacuum on it. And uh, that's been in there for several years now. And, uh, you know, it keeps the uh, olivine crystals green. Uh, the olivine crystals can oxidize and turn yellow. Okay, well, i got to wrap it up here. I've got a thousand other things to do. Uh, clearly, you can talk about this for, for quite a while yet. Uh, but at least I, I hope it gives you some ideas, some starting points on, uh, on how to uh, preserve your meteorite specimens.